Hey everyone, I'm Lauren Cadillac with Cadillac Law, and today we're going to be talking about adverse possession in the state of Texas. Before we get started though, and as always, nothing I say here is legal advice, and I'm not creating an attorney-client relationship between the viewer or myself or my firm. I'm just telling you things I know. And I happen to know quite a bit about Texas real estate, y'all. So make sure you hit like or subscribe and let's get into it. I've been getting a lot of calls lately about adverse possession. So I thought, let's talk about it. Let's discuss what it is and maybe you have a claim or right. Adverse possession is the possession of land in a way that is adverse to the owner. Sometimes call this a squatter's rights or squatters. It's where someone is on and using land in a way that is contrary to maybe the necessary way an owner would want. So for instance, if I see an empty lot of land and I park my trailer there and I go visit every week, start to get to the neighbors, so on and so forth, eventually over time, since I'm not paying that landowner rent, but I'm still utilizing their land, I can now build an adverse possession claim. So I find that a lot of folks get contact me regarding adverse possession. Some are really actually adversely possessing, and some are just trying to steal land. We do not steal land. This adverse possession is not <laughs> a method to acquire real estate, okay? This is just something that exists for good reasons. For instance, in Texas, there are several types of adverse possession and several time limits that are required. In Texas, if you have a deed to property and let's say it's kind of defective, it's not quite correct, but I bought a property and it got deeded to me. So I've recorded that deed. I'm paying the taxes. I'm using the property. But it turns out the deed is kind of like failed to properly convey. Well, after three years, I've adversely possessed it because I have color of title. I have this deed. Even though it failed to properly convey on its face, it did convey in that I've been using the land, so on and so forth. All right. Then we have the five-year statute for adverse possession, which is going to require me to be using the land, be paying the taxes, and have some type of color of title. This is a little more common where we have like an heir. They're the only heir though, because against other heirs, it's 10 years. So we'll get there in a minute. But where we have the single heir of a property and maybe they have an affidavit, maybe there's two heirs and the other has an affidavit of heirship and that is some form of color of title. When Texas used to not actually recognize quit claim deeds, we could make a five-year adverse possession based on a quit claim deed. They quit claimed it to me, even though it wasn't worth it's the paper it was printed on. I used the property for five years like it was my own. It is my own. Okay. The 10-year adverse possession is for someone who can show the elements of adverse possession have been met. Okay. This is when you don't have necessarily color of title. Okay. So we don't have a deed with a mistake. That's three years. We have some sort of color of title, like maybe an old quick claim deed or something is five years. 10 years, we're just going to be proving the elements of adverse possession, which I'll tell you in a minute. And then 20 years is another limit on the adverse possession. So there's three, five, 10, and 20 in the state of Texas. 20 years is going to be the one where I just came in on this land and just plopped down. And for 20 years, I used this land and nobody said anything. So now it's mine. I have to prove the elements, which we're going to show you in a minute. 10 years is similar, but it's not just some random piece of land. The 10 years would apply if I own a lot next to yours and I built onto yours and you didn't say anything during that 10 year time. I could adversely possess that section that I fenced in of your property. Okay. Now, 20 years, that's like, I'm some rando <laughs> and I just plop down here. And that happens, people. Like, it does happen where some random human being will just, you know, build a fort or whatever. <laughs> and the property is owned, but not managed, maintained, or watched. And so the person can adversely possess it. That's 20 years. That's the long game. Okay. Now, in order to adversely possess anything, you have to hit the five elements. The first one is going to be hostile. Okay, so it's adverse possession. So hostile being against the best interests or the needs or use of the owner. 
So if I'm on your land using your land and I'm not paying you rent, that is hostile to you. The next is actual. So I have to actually be out there and I have to have control and possession of the property. Okay. So on the land, when I put my trailer home on it and I'm going to live in my trailer home every day, now this is actual. Exclusive. I have to be the one doing this adverse possession, right? This is exclusively in my control. I can't be doing it with other potential people who can adversely possess, with the exception of heirs, and we'll get to that in one second. Open and notorious. So that means that I'm not doing this in hiding. I know the neighbors, the random land, and they put the trailer home. You know, I talk to the landowner across the street. Oh, yeah, I live here mine now you know i'm doing this open i'm not hiding the fact that i'm using this land and finally it needs to be continuous for the amount of time that we just stated three five ten or twenty years all right so to get back to the heirs because a lot of you who are watching this video you inherited a property with several of your siblings and you've been living in that property and you've been paying the taxes and they haven't been contributing if that's your case and you want to adversely possess against your relatives, against other heirs, the 10-year statute applies to you. So when mom passes, if you want to keep mom's house, you better stay in there for 10 years and you better be paying those taxes all 10 years and not getting any contribution from your fellow heirs. And another important piece on the heirship is that the heirs cannot ever come to you and say, hey, you need to sign a lease. I don't like that you're not paying me money for the use of the home, you know, whatever. So if the heirs don't do anything for 10 years, they don't say anything, they let you pay the taxes, they let you maintain the home, then after 10 years, you can meet the requirement to adversely possess against the other heirs. That's it. That's the exciting world of adverse possession. <laughs> when you've met the requirements, we do an affidavit of adverse possession and record that in the deed records. If you really want tangibly the ownership, as in you want to be able to sell or acquire title insurance, then we're probably going to have to file a lawsuit and make sure we quiet the title after we do the affidavit in the deed records and make sure we properly sent that to all the parties that need it. That's it, man. The law can be really exciting and interesting. Adverse possession is something people love to talk about. It is not easy to adversely possess something, and it is absolutely not a way to acquire real estate, period. So don't even try it. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you have a good one. We'll talk again soon.